action. The United States military is one of the most bestest economic resources that any black man or any American man could possibly have. If you're a C student and you graduate from high school and you don't, if you go to college, you're looking at thousands and thousands of dollars of debt. If you go to the military, then all of a sudden you have economic empowerment just like that. It's just that quick. But the black community looks at the military and they say, that's the white man's war. They were listening to Muhammad Ali and Muhammad Ali is one of the greatest fighters that ever existed. But he was financially capable. He had hands and he had the looks to survive in America without going to war. You don't have that option. And so when I talk to my son, when I talk to young black men, I say, hey, man, what do you want to do? I had a friend. He's one of my best friends. He, he told me he wanted to be an electrician's mate. He was still in high school when I was in the Navy, yes. And so when he told me he wanted to be an electrician's mate, I said, I have a recruiter. I'm going to send my recruiter to you. And all you have to do is tell him that you want to be an electrician. He'll sign you up to be an electrician's mate. You're not going to go to boot camp until that job opens up. When that job opens up, you're going to be guaranteed an A school and a C school. You're going to be in school for like two years. When you come out of school, you're going to go from being an E1 to an E4. Your check is going to go up. And if you come back to the real world, you have economic advancement instantly. He did it. And right now, my friend is a chief of the United States Navy. Wow. Just like that. That's amazing. Um, Muhammad Ali only was able to do that in the confines of a country that was built by white men and black men and black people. We built this together. But to say that it's solely just a white man's war, it's our war, too. And we have to look at it like that. Yes, we're dealing with racism. Yes, we, we've dealt with oppression as black people. But what you must understand, you need to fight for this country, not only on the outside, but the inside, too, because it's yours. Um, Muhammad Ali was able to have that freedom of speech and that opinion uh, and be able to even. Um, he was handsome and brilliant in America, man. In America. <laughs> and it's like, I, I don't understand how black people take on that. I, I mean, we still talking about it to this day, too. We, we we laugh at China and we laugh at Russia and all these countries. Oh, look at what they're doing. But this is your country. They see you as an, an American. They don't have any emotional attachment to your oppression. They I've see been you to American. Africa. I've been to Africa and they they were they hated me. They despised me. They said, look at this black American motherfucker. They said th these are their actual words. They like it was it was me and some other white individuals. It was 18 people. We got stopped. I was 17 years old. They pulled me out of the van, put an AK-47 on me and put a 45 on me and said, look, at this black American motherfucker. They took our passports. I thought we were instantly dead. But even at that time, I had the ability to finesse. And I just told them, hey, man, we're over here to help the people. And that's it. They laughed. gave us our passports back. And we did the thing. You're not living in absolute chaos. You're not living in violence. You have the freedom to say, I hate America. Go over there and say, I hate Africa. Go to the Ivory Coast and say, I hate the Ivory Coast. Go to Liberia and say, I hate Liberia. And see what's going to happen to you. Africans do not accept black Americans as African. I don't know why we struggle with that. Because we're not. <laughs> Even when we call ourselves African Americans, we are we are Americans. We're we're black Americans. We have some African descent, but that's the entire world that has, is descendants of Africa. So this whole idea, look, this whole idea that black people need to create some separate nation from America inside of America and fight for it's that nation is ridiculous. It's actually insane. You have to also think about the type of creature you're dealing with that took a country in under 200 years and made it a world class power. You're just not going to be able to take that over. Every man goes through struggle and has to have some type of sacrifice. You have to overcome those European men when they came over here. Lots of them starved to death. Lots of them were killed by Native Americans. They had to endure great hardship. A lot of them died on the ships just to get to this place. And now you amazing black people in America, you're here in the greatest country on the planet. But instead of being thankful and having gratitude, you'll sit there and be like, I ain't no American. Fuck America. And I'm like, hey, man, you're, you're, you're handicapping yourself and you're looking like a fool. And more importantly, you're looking like a coward because you're not willing to fight for and defend the place in which you exist in. Hey, look, it is hard. To even acknowledge that when you had something like slavery and Jim Crow. Hey, I'm 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 super uh, black proud. I talk about this all the time. But at the end of the day, this is our country. We fought out of those areas to let that be acknowledged and known. This is still a place that we must fight for abroad. And we have to understand that. Yes, we have a lot of internal issues and we have to continue fighting for some sort of level playing ground. 
But that doesn't mean that I'm not an American. Those white men that came from Europe to over here, they were peasants. They were serfs. They were in the lowest economic class. Lots of them were in the lowest economic class looking for economic advancement. And so they took some of the big, some of the biggest risks in history so they could come and have some self-actualization. And so right now, every black man in America, if you want self-actualization, you have to be willing to put your life on the line for it. You have to be willing to defend it. You have to have some ideas to make your to, to become actualized. Like this is the this is the uh, journey of being a man. Yeah, you, you said it also too. I'm someone who went to the military and changed my economic view. I changed my economic position. I'm from South. I'm from this neighborhood. I'm from South Park. Um, it's where I grew up at. Um, had I not gone to the military, I wouldn't have went to college. I don't think I was even thinking about college like most of us. Um, there are so m m many things that I wouldn't have been exposed to had I not gone to the military. So I think it's really silly. Listen, just because you go to the military doesn't mean that you're not black and doesn't mean that you don't understand the black plight or struggle. You don't have to change up who you are because I didn't at all. I, I didn't change up who I was. A, a college gives you some academic preparation, okay? It gives you the ability to, to understand information and process information. When you go to war, you understand life. You understand how to deal with life and people. It's a whole different social skill. It's a whole different physical skill. But not acknowledging the whole the whole entity of a man to be physically strong, to be mentally strong, to be uh, uh, emotionally strong, emotionally aware, you're handicapping yourself. There, man, there, there are a lot of black individuals who are uh, professionals who talk on social media and all they have is ideas. Man, I, I know what it takes to get mission accomplishment is my whole entire job. That's what I was designed to do, to accomplish a mission, to accomplish a mission. We'd rather go to prison. I've been there too. <laughs> but, 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 but black people as a whole rather do that and acknowledge that as some accolade in our community versus going to the military. And that's not to say, listen, sometimes that's just in your deck of cards. I know a lot of great brothers that come out of prison and excel, but they actually have a lot of times the same outcome. These are two institutions that are supposed to give you some sort of difficulty and discipline. And out of that, the best are going to thrive. The best are going to come out of that. But it's just so, and both of these are white ran institutions. So I don't see how you look at one is good and not the other is good when they both can have the same outcome. Every black man should participate in one of three institutions, uh, academia, the military, or if you don't participate in those two, you're probably going to go to the uh, prison system. And so Charles and White said that. And so for me, out of, I've experienced all three. I think the prison system, because it, the hierarchy comes from power. You have to fight to be powerful in prison. The politics, they exist. But the most powerful person with the most powerful ideas who can defend those ideas is going to be the most powerful person. When you go to school, you got you got to suck academia's wee wee. You know what I'm saying? You sitting there, uh, you might your, whoever your professor is, you have to acquiesce to your professor. When you go to the military, whoever your 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 first class or your sergeant is, you have to acquiesce to these people's ideas because they have an entire system that is going to hold you accountable if you do not. When you go to prison. Hey, let me catch this fade, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But even in all in all three, mainly the two, you are going to be refined in some some way. Um you will your manhood will be tested, you know, you either going to break or you're going to persevere. So I think men need really all of those at some point, not all of them in terms of, you know, you have to go to prison, but don't like you say prison. Don't don't go to prison. But <laughs> when I talk about men as a whole, if you don't do those two, like you say, and you end up here, something life is going to teach you one way or the other. The brotherhood and the camaraderie when you go to the military, I'm not going to let you fail. Like right. I remember distinctly when we're doing P uh, PT tests and all that stuff. I'm going to go back. I'm going to run with the people who are not doing good because I know that if you don't pass, if you don't pass this physical fitness test, you don't get sent back and have to do this stuff all over again. When you just see that camaraderie and men working together, when you see guys in World War II, they wasn't dying for no idea. They was dying for the guy on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of them. Like, brotherhood matters. If we don't have a sense of brotherhood right now in America, we're going to completely lose America. We're losing America right now in a culture war because men, would re men refuse to defend masculinity and manhood. Ah, man, that is so true. 
um, I really do feel like we're losing our country and not in the way that we've been told. I think that we feel as though we're losing our country to immigration. We're not losing our country to immigration, are, even if you <laughs> even if you see it as an issue. I mean, you can see it as an issue. I'm going to give you a little like right now. There are more immigrants in America than there are black people. Wow. Yes. Like when you see the numbers in 1970, these are rough estimates. You go back and you can check it. There were about 9 million immigrants in America in like 1970. Right now, there are like 44 to 50 million immigrants in America wow. right now. Okay, maybe we have to. I may, I may, be, I may be, I stand corrected on these, that. These people are, are coming on boats. They're swimming across oceans to get to the greatest place on earth. And you got niggas in here talking about, I don't want to be here. But again, I think that's what's going to ended quicker than immigration is probably how I should put that. I think, like you say, uh, not having uh, our attack on masculinity, I've said this over and over again, the perversion that we have, and not having a sense of nationalism here in our own country that we are all American. Like, we are American and we stand on American principles. We villainize that too. We have just American, hey, you know, that does have a lot to do with racism. That does have a lot to do with racism in this country and how people view um, how we have uh, participated in politics in regards to race. But no matter what, we, without any real nationalism, without any real love for your country, you, it's, it's going to disintegrate. Men not having a political agenda is destroying America. Us, like we take our masculinity for granted. We hold our nuts and we say, just because I have a penis and some muscles, that makes me powerful in America. Right. Having a political ideology makes you powerful. And us not having a political ideology have, hey, right now, if you want to unify men in America, child support is destroying the man in America. If I do not have uh, autonomy over my body, then I'm not a free person. And right now, men in America do not have bodily autonomy. Women, they're fighting for the right to, to assassinate children, men should fight for the ability to create life. If you have the ability to create life, then you'll be a powerful person. If not, we're going to be extinct. I think I think that's a great point. Um, it truly isn't equal at all. And I've said I said this, you know, with our last clips was that we're not equal because somebody has to come and put in legislation, woman, for your protection when you don't have it. There is no true legislation for a man's protection at in this country. all. Because right. I'm supposed to defend myself and defend you simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And so to understand that, men have to have actual laws on the books that protect my masculinity and protect manhood. I mean, that, like that hurt my feelings. When I was in the military, uh, my grandfather passed away and I wanted to go to his funeral. And they told me that I could not go to his funeral because I, I was an, an essential asset to the command. And I was like, yo, how in the world am I defending freedom, but I have no liberties myself? That's a conflict of interest. And right now, men in America, you're defending freedom and you do not have bodily autonomy. That's a conflict of interest. Definitely. That gets me excited, man. That makes me, hey, like, I believe that if 10 million men were to stand up and march on these streets, that we could completely change legislation. There would be no more conversation about any of this degenerate behavior, because if you want to be a degenerate in America, then fight for it. One of the things, though, I think that does hurt us in this country, and we have to say it, is race. It does, man. Like, ra racism is an issue. Even though we're saying all the time, hey, we got to look past it. If you just look into the, the political um, arena or atmosphere, it comes up so much. And we feel like due to that, we don't have any common ground. But we really do. I don't even think that we should look past it. Like, I embrace the hate. I understand that based on the color of my skin, there are people in America who dislike me. But you disliking me is not going to stop me from being a political entity. It's not going to stop me from making sure that this media goes out to empower other men. I'm going to do the work no matter what the obstacles are. One of my favorite words from the Bible is called long suffering. Long suffering is a word for perseverance. It means you have to go through the hard things to be strong. And black men. Hey, go through the hard things, understand that there is resistance, but after the resistance, man, it comes, it comes great reward. That's true. I think one thing, too, that black men need to uh, accept since we're going back to the military, or we were talking about the military, black men joining the military, is why are we so afraid of blue collar work? Hey, listen, I worked in music. I was in the military. I drive Uber full time. I love it. I'm providing for my family. Um, it's blue collar work. We can't run away from blue collar work. 
you have to work for your family and you have to also get into positions to where you can take that blue collar check and deploy it to make provision for your family. That's what you have to do. We can't work, run from any blue collar uh, job or position in this country. Thank you so much for putting that in perspective. Classism is going to destroy America before racism does. We have a class divide in America right now. We have all these poor men looking up at the affluent men talking about one day I'm going to have that. One day I'm going to have a G-Wagon. One day I'm going to live in River Oaks. One day I'm living in the most prestigious places in America. Accept your place in life. Like the only way that you have social mobility is to create the institutions so that you can rise up in classes. And that comes from having a political agenda. So if you were to just completely abolish child support, that will have some social mobility for men to be able to buy homes and to have families. But we're castrating men through legislation. Definitely. Um, and also through social media programming. I mean, we are comparing ourselves to people every day. So when you talk about that G-Wagon, first off, no one, if you just look at the numbers, somebody lying out here. Because when we talk about income and money, like what you said, you know, even $8,000, $9,000 a month, most people aren't making that. So how are people able to afford these things that you're seeing to make you believe that they're rich? And then I think I read some article, it may have came out this year, that 70% of the quote unquote millionaires live check to check. Hey, uh, black folks be promoting scamming culture. All right. Like I like, I like black content creators. I think earn your leisure. They can have some positive information, but they be having j uh, jokers on there that promote, that promote scamming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. We promote a scamming culture because we're trying to find a shortcut to social mobility. There is no shortcut to being a man in America. You do the work, you persevere, you create the thing, and then you watch the women come as you create the thing. And then you have community. And there ain't no such thing as fixing your credit in six months. <laughs> like, it takes time to fix credit. Getting these trade lines and all this, like you said, all this bullshit about, it's scammy. We we want everything to be microwave. Like every every We want everything as quickly as possible. And life doesn't work like that. So back to your long-suffering um, commentary on the Bible, like all great things take time. I even said this in terms of even marriage, because I'm I'm a proponent of marriage. I believe in marriage, especially the black marriage, because it needs to be saved. It's an institution. It's an institution that is a long that requires a long term investment, and that's just what it is. Long term investments. I think it was a uh, Warren Buffett who says he he doesn't really believe in like um pulling out of investments. He makes like really good investments and long term. Those are the things that make you wealthy. That's what he says. One of his one of his theories. You know, I, I'm sure wealthy pe people all have different ideologies. But I, if you look, look at most things, it's ebbs, ebbs and flow. It's up and down. But over the long term, you see growth. That's what you want to see. There are very few things that you get in a short amount of time that that have lasting impact on your life. The girl that you get to smash instantly. Like you didn't have to put no work into that. You don't value it that much. But when you actually had to work and save to, to accomplish a goal, you value that thing a whole lot. And I think that as we build men, that's one of the most bestest things to have. Like uh, I mentor several individuals. that are my friends. I consider them my friends because it's a learning experience. The information I get from them, it builds me and the, the information I part on them. I hope that it adds value to their lives. And as we watch each other grow, I'm watching the success and I just get so excited. I watched my friend make a million dollars and I was like, holy Christ, man, congratulations, you know, but it just, it just took a collaborative effort of a meeting, meeting of the minds in order to get to that place. And we have to be like that as men too. We have to want to lift each other up, want to see each other progress because the true wealth is in your relationships. You know, when I had hard times, I reached out to my friends and family because a lot of time that is your bank. Of, of all things, that's your bank of not just money. That's your bank of therapy. Uh, that could be your 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 bank of just uh, consoling when you have issues going on, whatever it might be. Um, it's the people that you put around yourselves. We have to also learn interdependence. Your social circle is your good credit. That's your good credit. That's true. How, how valuable is your name? Do you have a good name? Ooh. Or are you that person who shows up and when you show up, they know Man, that nigga gonna ask me for some money. <laughs> He's not going to pay me back. <laughs> I think specifically with black men, we have to understand that 
it is your reputation, your integrity, your character matters. It matters very much. Who do who do they say you are? I thank you so much for showing up for me because this message is important for not only the black community, but all men in America. And if you didn't show up in a spirit of collaboration so we can impart this conversation on, on these individuals, it wouldn't exist. We are creators and this is our creation. And I thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate that. I thank you too. I thank you for having me. Hey, this show is explosive. This show is really explosive. I watch it. Um, I've seen it grow. I'm proud of that. It's influenced me. I'm like, damn, I need to step my game up. So I'm happy to be a part of it. But I also see the impact that it's making on our culture. We need it. I mean, especially when you have somebody like, uh, what's his name? Jason Black. <laughs> when you told me Jason Black got He I went like, hard on my American flag. This dude was talking crap on my American flag. He's like, I'm like, if you're not proud of where you exist at, then that's a problem, okay? It takes, my, 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 my father said, my grandfather told him, it takes a piss poor dog not to wag his own tail. Yeah. Meaning, you live in America, uh, where this is your nation, and you ain't gonna take care of the place that you exist in, you got a problem, okay? Correct that shit immediately. Yeah, man. So we're making impact here. Like, the impact is being made. People are just, uh, are, are talking about all types of, um, ideas and all types of um philosophies that we have also as black men we need to be showing this to the world that we're just not a um we're not a homogenous group of people meaning that we just think one way we're just we're, we're, we're not like that we have a a wide variety of of ideas and we're culturally and diverse we're culturally i don't diverse. give a shit if you're republican or a democrat hey i love you man like your political ideology is not going to stop me from befriending you or building with you that's just that's just a category that they use to to separate us. And right now, we have to be as united in solidarity as possible, especially in this class war. Working class men have to work with working class men. That's no color included. Hey, I'm and 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 this is something that I feel like we need to do. We need we need regular. Stop thinking regular means bad. Stop. Look, if you think about the average, that means most. Most people <laughs> fall into a certain category and, and we are relatable to one another. We are coming to you as blue collar average men. That's not a bad thing. You the, can be an extraordinary average man. The only time your feelings should be hurt is if you be low average. There you go. That means you're inadequate, motherfucker. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's exactly it. And we got to have these conversations because like you were talking about with Rolo or like Fresh and Fit and all these other guys, you know, we're not pretending here. You need to hear from real men going through real situations to help your ass because you listening to all these other people that's just putting on to get some views and get a check from you. That ain't helping you. You need to really build yourself. And when it comes to building yourself, I'm not going to tell anyone to walk into a job market that's not going to accommodate you. So when I say that being a man is a political issue, that means we have to fight uh, to have unions so that we can have negotiating power. Every man in America needs two weeks of paid vacation and two weeks of paid sick leave. If you ain't got a month off from work, then you're literally a working slave. And I'm asking you to improve the quality of your life. Our forefathers did it. My father did it. My father worked for a union, worked for union companies. He was a shop steward. He defended men. This is our protection. And protection only comes from collaboration. And that's what gets me excited. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive. The greatest American alive.